Awesome. Welcome everybody to our little hormone happy hour here. And I just want to share that there is a shocking revelation that everybody needs to know about. So brace yourselves. Did you know that menopause can absolutely rob you blind? Yes, it can steal your financial wealth. It can steal your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. And there was actually a study published by the Mayo Clinic. It's very recent, just this month. And it actually showed that there is actually a cost related with menopause. And they actually put it at $1.8 billion billion dollars lost in work time per year. And then it's 26.6 billion annually. If you add up lost work, lost wages, plus medical expenses associated with treating the symptoms of menopause. This is just for menopausal women in the United States, how much money is being lost because we're not treating it properly. We are actually making believe it's this big surprise. Like, oh my God, this woman's 50 and all of a sudden all this stuff is happening to her. Like we know what's gonna happen. We know about the hormone decline and we're just not being proactive about it. Our medical system is like looking the other way when women go into the doctor's office with all these symptoms. This is something we really need to talk, talk about. And today we're gonna shed some light on this. So hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Sands. I'm a naturopathic physician and menopause specialist. And today we're talking about the high cost of menopause. And we're talking about physical, mental, emotional relationship and financial cash money cost of the hormone decline. And then I'm gonna also answer all of your questions so that you can be healthy and wealthy well beyond your period. So first I wanna talk about the physical cost of menopause. Now, these are the ones that you guys know all too well, the hot flashes, the sudden weight gain, the insomnia, um, the fatigue that just like makes you feel like a zombie, joint pain, hair loss, the wrinkles, saggy skin, all of these symptoms can really take a toll on our well being, but also our confidence. And then there's a deeper layer when it comes to physical. So, all those symptoms that we associate with menopause, all the annoying, frustrating, day-to-day -day symptoms that really impede our ability to enjoy our lives. That's one thing. But what we often don't talk about is the real increased risk of chronic conditions like osteoporosis, uh, diabetes, heart disease. So as estrogen levels drop, our bones become more vulnerable. They're not rebuilding as well. And that makes osteoporosis a real threat. And osteoporosis is actually life-threatening. Um, we don't think about this as much, but the statistics are after a fall, women of 60, age 60 and above, after a fall, they're only estimated to live one year beyond that fall because of how vulnerable their health has become. And then we have, of course, the cardiovascular health as we age, as our hormones start to decline, especially estrogen, we have increased inflammation, our blood vessels aren't as elastic, and we can have increased cholesterol, increased heart disease, also diabetes. So as our hormones fluctuate, our insulin resistance becomes uh, worse and worse, and we become more insulin resistant. We're not able to process the carbohydrates and the sugars. And that can lead us to risk of both weight gain, but also developing diabetes. And then we have inflammation. So estrogen is one of our potent anti-inflammatory hormones. And when estrogen drops, inflammation increases, and that can lead to things like autoimmunity, gut issues, allergies, joint pain, all types of issues. But don't worry, there are some proven strategies that can protect our bones, our hearts, our blood sugar, and help us feel better on the day-to-day. -day. Our final period is not the end of our life. Menopause is a life stage, not a life sentence. So just know that there's a lot we can do, and that's why we're doing these q and So that's your physical cost of menopause, all of those symptoms, and of course, all of the financial costs that go along with um, paying for all the the ibuprofen and the pain pills and the gut health issues and all the little things we have to take and the doctor's visits and all those things that go along with it add up to the cost. So then we have the emotional toll. And if you're going through perimenopause or menopause, you can probably relate to the mood roller coaster that pops up these bouts of sadness for no rhyme or reason. You might feel irritable at the drop of a dime. You might snap out your loved ones. You might feel blah or irritated or annoyed for just no reason at all. And in fact, more than 50% 
So 50% of women who are in perimenopause or menopause or postmenopause struggle with significant depression, anxiety, and mood symptoms. And so it's not in your head, it's your sex hormones like estrogen and progesterone. They are deeply intertwined with our brain neurotransmitters. So they interact with serotonin, with GABA, with dopamine, and also with epinephrine and norepinephrine. So our estrogen can actually influence our serotonin levels and our serotonin receptors. And this is our feel good chemicals. So that can have an impact of whether we're able to be happy, whether we're able to have like joy in our lives. And it also can modify um, our stress neurotransmitters. So things like epinephrine and norepinephrine. So we're not able to handle stressful situations. A stressful situation in menopause is like 10 times worse than a stressful situation when you have balanced hormones. So when you're off balance, just think about if you're standing on one leg and you're trying to balance and then someone just gently pushes you, you're going to fall over. But if you're standing on two legs and someone gently pushes you, you're not going to fall over because when one situation you're balanced and the other situation you're off balance. So if you're already off balance, it's a lot easier to get pushed over the edge, so to speak. And this can lead to low self-image. It can lead to lost confidence. It can lead to lost opportunities. Like you're going to not want to go out with friends. You're going to not want to take vacations. You're not going to want to do the things that you once enjoyed because you might be worried about your mood or how you're going to feel. You might be just depressed and feeling blah and just want to sit on the couch all the time. And that can lead to isolation and just overall quality of life goes down. And so one of the first line treatments for menopause is antidepressants. And this is because depression and anxiety are very much synonymous with hormone decline. However, in naturopathic medicine, we believe in root cause medicine. So we're not going to give you antidepressant if you are depressed because your estrogen is low. We're going to look at what's the cause of the, the depression. It's low estrogen. We're going to treat that. And so this is why it just doesn't make sense to me why conventional medicine is so backwards when it comes to menopause. So we've got our emotions, we got our physical. Now we're gonna look into mental health and cognitive decline associated with menopause. So you may have experienced the brain fog, the forgetfulness, where our memory is playing hide and seek with us, where we're finding it hard to focus. And basically, it's what it sounds like. We have that brain fog. And so you might find yourself leaving your wallet places, forgetting where you put your keys or your phone or forgetting why you walked into a room. Sometimes we might like have a hard time grasping the word that we want or forgetting somebody's name that we know. We've known them for years. We should know their name. Um, these are situations where our brain is having a hard time concentrating. And this is very, very common. And actually a little, little true story here. I had a woman come to work with us in the Healthy Hormone Club and she was about 51 years old and she had been recently diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. She had forgetfulness and brain fog that was so severe. And so basically she was looking for a way to reverse her Alzheimer's. And so we did some testing. We saw her hormones were super low. Um, we got her on hormone replacement therapy and it turned out that she just had menopause brain fog. She did not have Alzheimer's at all. So we didn't reverse Alzheimer's. We just reversed the severe menopause brain fog and the misdiagnosis of Alzheimer's. So she was basically going down the path where she was going to need assisted living, where she was just like kind of ending her life. She was quitting her job. She was giving up responsibilities because she knew this Alzheimer's was going to cause this decline when really all she needed was some hormone replacement and getting her hormones balanced. And also, of course, we included omega-3s. We included a lot of like choline and, and krill oil and brain health foods. And so it wasn't, it's not just about taking hormones. It's a whole holistic approach that we take to hormone replacement, but True story, you can feel like you have dementia or Alzheimer's and just have menopause brain fog. And so why does this happen? Well, it's because our estrogen and our progesterone are closely related to our brain function. 
estrogen helps to the brain to actually get fuel. And so um, when our hormones decline, we can have a decrease in cognitive abilities. We can have loss of attention span, loss of motor function, loss of verbal recall, loss of memory. And estrogen loss is also associated with the increase of amyloid plaques in the brain, which can lead to Alzheimer's because basically those parts of the brain aren't getting fed and they're not getting the energy that they need. And so they kind of go dormant. And this is pretty common. So is it normal? Well, it's, it's common. And more than 40% of women do um, experience forgetfulness, brain fog. And then uh, for menopausal women, up to 66% say that it actually affects their quality of life. So um, that's huge. Very important. Probably the biggest scare that I think women you know, over 50 have is losing their mental capacity and losing their ability to be um, independent. And so this is huge because there's so much we can do. So we talked about mental, emotional. Um, now we're gonna talk about relationship. So we know how tricky it can be to navigate relationships when we are in perimenopause and menopause. Communication can break down we're not as intimate as we used to be. We have those mood swings. We can snap at our partners. We can just find ourselves trying to pick fights for no reason. There's just this drama and there's a statistical correlation between menopause and the rate of divorce. So now more and more, more women ask for divorces or get divorces when they're in menopause, but that doesn't mean that menopause causes divorce. There's just a correlation there. But what we do know is that once, when a woman reaches perimenopause or menopause, her mood definitely changes. She definitely is not as interested in sex. She might feel more distant from her husband. She, all the little things that he used to do that used to be cute are now annoying. And so a lot of times couples will stop, start sleeping in separate rooms. They start like not talking to each other as much. Uh, they argue more, have sex less, feel more distant. And this can actually put a huge strain on relationships and quality of life. So now last and not least, I wanna talk about money, right? So hormone decline has a lot of financial implications. And this is really what that study was I talked about earlier. They were actually looking at the, the financial implications and they looked at over 3000 women who are in menopause and they looked at how their menopause symptoms were actually affecting their career, their finances and their ability to work. And this is something that's not talked about enough at all. And the fact is that most women, when they're at the height of their career, like when they got their top position, when they have the most responsibility, that's also generally when they're in perimenopause and menopause, like when you're in your late forties, early fifties, that's precisely when the challenges start. And unfortunately, the symptoms of menopause can make you not be able to be on your game. You don't feel like you're at the top of your game like you used to be. You can't keep up with the pace and the productivity. You might need to take time off work. You might worry about giving a presentation and soaking through your blouse with sweat because you're having a hot flash. And as a result of all of the symptoms from the brain fog to the weight gain, to the joint pain, the extreme fatigue, inability to sleep, which then causes more fatigue and inability to concentrate, the hot flashes, the migraines, all of these things cause women to, one, not go for promotions, two, step back from responsibilities, three, some of them quit their job altogether. And so there is, they actually estimated $1.8 billion in lost revenue in both productivity and job loss and missed work days. And so if you add that to the cost of treating symptoms of menopause, that financial toll is even worse. Between doctor's visits, medication, reduced work productivity, it can feel like a never ending toll on your bank account. And so this is why uh, I really think it's important for you to go to a practitioner about your menopause symptoms that actually understands menopause. Because the big problem in medicine today is doctors just not saying, hey, I'm not an expert in menopause. I didn't have any menopause training. So I'm going to refer you to this other person who is an expert and can help you. Instead, they say, well, you know, that's just how life is. There's nothing you can do. Take this antidepressant. And someone will just say, oh, hormones are bad for you. You don't need hormones. And that's just a real disservice to women, especially women who can actually have a life that's thriving. And that's why I created 
Healthy Hormone Club because I really wanted to make an affordable, accessible, easy to access way for women to balance their hormones holistically. And so I actually created a brand new version of it. It's the Healthy Hormone Club Essentials, where you can get all of your testing, consultations, round the clock support, hormones delivered to your door, holistic lifestyle coaching, because we have a holistic component as well, all for $99 a month. So that's like three bucks a day. And so basically I just want to take away all the reasons why women cannot get the help that they need because midlife can be magical. It doesn't have to be the end. It's the middle. It's midlife. That's why they call it midlife. All right. So now that I unveiled all the costs of menopause and we kind of talked about all of the different ways menopause can be costing us, let's talk about what you can do to solve it. And so I want to take your questions. Um, it's your turn. Don't be shy. Ask away. I see there's a few questions in the chat right now. So I'm going to go to that um, in the Q&A. Hi, everybody. Well, I've got people from Australia, Ecuador, Oregon, and Missouri here. Woohoo! Everyone's in the house. All right. If you're on the phone, um, you can also um, send an email in with your question, and I do answer all the questions. And so let me get to the Q&A. Why is it not? Oh, it's popping up on my other screen over here, so I'm going to bring it over. Awesome. So I've been taking Everall Conti patch since September. I have since experienced acne, hair breakage, and bleeding, scans have shown nothing. Onward, is my patch producing too much hormones? Possibly. I would definitely recommend testing your hormones to make sure you're on the right dose. Um, true story here. I got another little anecdotal story that is really proving why we test hormones. So there was a recent news story about a woman who for the past three years, she's been told that she has menopause symptoms and she was experiencing like pain in her midsection around her ovaries. She was experiencing fatigue. She was experiencing nausea, just headaches and different types of things. And she was just kept going to her doctor, asking to test her hormones. And they kept saying, no, we don't need to test your hormones. You're just in menopause. And then finally, after three years, she had extreme excruciating pain and she went to the doctor and they sent her to the ER and they did a scan and she had an ovarian tumor. Now, if we had been testing her hormones, like we do in our practice, we would have seen abnormal levels of hormones and we would have said, Hey, you might have a tumor. Let's do an ultrasound. So I really recommend always testing hormones so that you know that you're in the right range and there's nothing wrong. Not to say there's something wrong with your particular issue. I would say based on the fact that you started taking this patch and then you started having this symptom, I would put two and two together. Some people have a sensitivity to the adhesive in the patch and that can cause some issues, some toxicity involved. So you might want to go with a different form of hormones or a different delivery method. Let's see, I'm taking oral progesterone, 50 milligrams, six days a week, and the Estradot, 25 every four days. Can you talk about the relative accuracy of saliva and blood tests and these hormones? So if you're taking oral progesterone and the estradiol, you may have a slightly off number on your estrogen just because it's a transdermal delivery system. And so saliva picks up the transdermal better. The oral hormones are picked up by the blood test. So um, we use saliva testing in our practice because we use topical hormones. They are the safest and have the least side effects. And so with your estradiol, because that is topical, I would recommend salivary testing. That's going to give you a more accurate measure of your free hormone level. So your unbound free hormones. And I just actually talked about for a while about the dangers of imbalanced hormones. Having imbalanced BHRT levels, meaning getting the wrong dose, that's just going to give you either it, inadequate relief of your symptoms if you have too low or can bring on new symptoms if you have too high. So with hormones, it's like Goldilocks, right? You don't want to take more than you need because that's not going to help you. Too much hormones sometimes causes similar symptoms to too little hormones. So you always want to keep balance. And the other thing too, if your hormones aren't in the proper balance, like if you have too much progesterone in relation to your estrogen, if it's not at a balanced level, then you can actually block some of the impact of your estrogen because progesterone and estrogen kind of oppose each other. And the same thing with testosterone. So you don't want to overdo one hormone and you want to have them all balanced together. 
and then all balanced with the proper dose for you. So you can know that by your symptoms, but also by testing. Yeah, so hopefully that's helpful. So if you're working with a nat naturopathic physician and she's telling you to do a saliva test, I would definitely do the saliva test. You know, anytime a doctor is asking you to do a test, that's just more information for you. So there's nothing wrong with doing a little test where you spit in a tube, not going to hurt you at all. All right, we have another testing question. So my saliva hormone result was low DHEA, low estrogen, progesterone, and cortisol. I have Hashimoto's and low blood pressure. My doc has me on 10 milligrams of DHEA, adaptogens, and cortisol manager. It's been three months and I don't feel any gains in my energy or weight loss. My diet and sleep is good. Anything else I should consider? Well, it looks like you said you have low estrogen, low progesterone, low cortisol, and low DHEA. So the low cortisol and DHEA are signs that your adrenals are fatigued. And so definitely focusing on stress reduction, things like rest and recovery, mindfulness, meditation, breath work, looking at your minerals, making sure that you're getting all your minerals and electrolytes, potassium, magnesium, all of those things are super important. You want to make sure that you're eating just a balanced diet, getting enough protein, eating at regular intervals during the day, sleeping seven to nine hours. And then you want to look at your estrogen and progesterone. I mean, we don't want to keep those low because those can actually increase inflammation and increase, you know, stress on your body, which will then in turn have an effect on your energy and your weight loss. So those are, that's what I'd recommend looking at those estrogen and progesterone numbers, just from what you have here in the Hashimoto's is a thyroid condition. So I'm assuming that you're on some type of thyroid medication or that you're doing some type of thyroid supplement. You definitely want to check your thyroid numbers as well, because those are symptoms of low thyroid as well. So making sure that's under control and then reducing inflammation, healing and sealing the gut. Those are great ways to help with the Hashimoto's. So hopefully that's helpful. There's using estrogen patches prevent ovulation. No, so estrogen patches are not birth control pills. So birth control pillows are generally synthetic hormones and they are about 100 times more potent than menopause hormone replacement. So you will not stop ovulation by taking hormone replacement therapy, but you will stop ovulation when you take oral contraceptives. So those are, like I said, there's a typically synthetic and they are 100 times more potent than your typical menopause hormone replacement doses. And so this is why it perplexes me when you have a doctor who will say, oh, hormone replacement therapy for menopause, that's bad for you. But here's the birth control pill. And it's, wait a minute, that is synthetic. It's oral usually, and it's a hundred times more potent. So it's definitely causing problems. So anyway, that's my little shtick, but yes. What is the B in BHRT? It's bioidentical, biologically identical to what your body produces. So as the chemical structure of your hormones, your estrogen, your progesterone, your thyroid, your insulin, there's a certain chemical structure that makes it that hormone. And so you can recreate that exact chemical structure. And then it is that hormone, just like H2O, that's water. But with synthetic hormones or HRT, that tends to be kind of similar to the hormones that your body makes, but not exact. And so it doesn't fit quite into the receptor just the right way. And it can cause issues down the line. So in naturopathic medicine, we're going to do everything as close to nature as possible, as close to how your body expects to receive it. And that paves the way for not having issues because your body is very intelligent. It can tell if something's not quite right and it's not going to work quite the right way. Let's see, my Dutch test showed extremely high estriol and let's see, 8% 2OH. Is the, my, I'm not going deep into people's individual test results because that's kind of boring for the video. <laughs> so let's see, my estrogen and estradiol almost postmenopausal, but my estriol is high. I'm 46. My DHEA is also extremely low. With this estrogen profile, would you recommend supplementing with low-dose estradiol? I'm confused why one is so high. Generally, estriol being high is generally 
one, you can be pregnant because that's when it goes really high, or two, there's a lot of skincare and cosmetics that have estriol in them. And so you might be exposed to it otherwise. You didn't say your age, I'm assuming you're postmenopausal. No, you're 46. You did say your age, but I would definitely, if your estriol, estradiol is low, then I would consider supplementing with that because that's going to help you with a lot of your brain fog and a lot of the issues as well. Yeah, DIM is not going to really do that much for estriol because it's really estradiol that's helping the detox. So you take oral progesterone right now. So you're probably exposed to some estriol that's in a lot of cosmetics because it actually works. Let's see. Saliva testing for oral progesterone level and estrogen. Okay, I think this might be the same person or maybe somebody different. So saliva testing, you can do saliva testing for any hormone replacement, but blood testing for topical hormones is not going to give you the correct, it's not going to pick it up. So it's going to look like your hormones are still low. So you can do saliva or dry blood spot where you use your capillary blood and that's going to give you the results for your topical hormones. Let's see, I'm 58, went through menopause when I was 50, had low hormones after, okay. I just started BHRT a little more than a year ago. Also vaginal atrophy, vagrofen isn't strong enough, maybe a string, your thoughts about efficacy safety. I am more a fan of low-dose topical vaginal estrogen in addition to systemic hormone replacement therapy. There's some women that are gonna need both. There's some women who, will get the benefit of the vaginal rejuvenation from just systemic hormone replacement or just vaginal, but I recommend a combination for most people. Let's see, my income is very low. Let's see, so I'm not a fan of estrogen, but it's not horrible. I would recommend a, like a topical vaginal estrogen, but for some women, they like the estrogen because it's easy. You put it in and then you don't have to worry about it. So if you can get that in Canada, then I would go ahead and do that. And, but as far as like systemic hormone replacement, like for you know, preventing Alzheimer's and osteoporosis and heart disease and skin sagging and hot flashes and sleeping better and reducing inflammation, um, the vaginal estrogen is not going to do it. There's a difference between hormone replacement therapy and vaginal, low dose vaginal estrogen. Low dose vaginal estrogen stays local to the vaginal mucosa. So it just affects the vaginal atrophy, the pH of the vagina, dryness, skin irritation, comfort, elasticity. So that is not hormone replacement therapy. That is just low dose local vaginal estrogen. It does not go up in the bloodstream. Now, if you did high dose vaginal estrogen, a super high dose, that can bleed up into the bloodstream and you might see some increase in your systemic numbers, but generally how vaginal estrogen is dosed, it's dosed a very small amount, like one fiftieth of your daily dose of estrogen that you would use topically or orally. And that is really all that you need for that area. Over the counter, just in the UK, they just started releasing vaginal estrogen over the counter that you can get in the drugstore. And then here in the US and also worldwide, we offer Glow Below, which is our vaginal serum that has your choice of estrogen or DHEA. And that's available you know, in the US, but also Canada, UK, everywhere we ship pretty much worldwide, anywhere you can receive mail. And then also the Healthy Hormone Club is available also in Canada, in the UK as well. Okay, let's see. I struggled with my hormones for years. I've had ovarian tumor removed three years ago, and they said it was ovarian cancer. Fortunately, it was benign and also endometriosis. I always steered clear from supplementing my hormones because it can cause cancer. Is that something to be concerned about? So number one, hormones don't cause cancer. Stem cells cause cancer. Toxins cause cancer. DNA damage causes cancer. So if hormones cause cancer, all the pregnant women would have cancer because your hormones skyrocket like 100 times when you are pregnant. And also the statistics are the more times you've been pregnant. So the more times you've had surges of hormones, the less risk you have for cancer. Also women who are on bioidentical hormone replacement therapy 
have better outcomes should they get cancer and they are less likely to have reoccurrence of cancer. So the fact that hormones cause cancer, that statement is based on a 2002 study of women who were already sick who were taking oral synthetic hormones that are made from horse urine. So bioidentical topical hormones do not cause cancer at all. They actually protect from cancer. And the, you have to think about this. So who is the population that gets ovarian cancer and breast cancer more? Is it 20-year-olds or is it 60-year-olds? And of those two populations, who has more estrogen? It's when you lose your estrogen, when you have DNA damage, when you're smoking, when you're eating Twinkies and Doritos, when you're not exercising, when you're drinking alcohol, these all can cause inflammation, DNA damage, and that is what causes cancer, not your estrogen. So really important, read the book, Estrogen Matters. It's written by an oncologist. And it's all about the truth and the facts. And also, if you look, Oprah has been talking about this. There's been more and more research coming out every day about how that thought process of hormones causing cancer is flawed. It's, there's no science behind it. And it's really been just a disservice to women across the board. Doctors who say that haven't read any studies in the last 20 years. <laughs> There's something called translational medicine. And what that means is it actually takes 17 years on average for research that comes out today to make it into standard of care at your doctor's office. So you, we can find out today that a certain drug that is being prescribed all the time is causing a side effect or an issue. And then it would take 17 years for them to stop prescribing it. Or we can find out that there's this miracle cure for something and it would actually take 17 years for it to get into the standard of care in medicine. So we're right at the point where now it's been 20 years since that Women's Health Initiative study. So I think in the next four or five years, doctors are gonna start learning more about hormone replacement. I actually just got an email. Let me see if I can find it real quick. From her name is Tabitha, Dr. Tabitha. She is the gutsy gynecologist and she, she is trained as a traditional gynecologist. And I just wanted to read you what she wrote. This is what she wrote to me. So she says, so many women are still looking to conventional gynecologists for answers. And I love explaining to women that gynecologists are surgeons, not hormone experts. We spend four years learning how to do surgery and deliver babies, not learning the intricacies of the endocrine system and how it interacts with all other symptoms. We are the wrong people to help navigate midlife. And she says, I love explaining how conventional gynecologists are not only failing women, but actually harming them by covering up symptoms of hormone imbalance and menopause with pills and procedures. And she goes on to talk about endometrial ablation and all these other things. And she says, I love breaking apart the women's health initiative study and showing women how hormones aren't dangerous. Hormones are life. So that's Dr. Tabitha Barber. She is a colleague of mine, but she is a gynecologist and she's just kind of explaining how when you go to the doctor and they're telling you that hormones are bad, they are doing you a disservice. They haven't learned, they haven't studied the science. And so I cannot stress enough why you should not believe that. Let's see, can you explain how estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone all work together in women and what changes happen in menopause? Well, that is like a 101. So actually, do you see that book right there behind me? It's called Hormone Harmony Over 35. I actually explain estrogen, what it does in the body, progesterone, what it does in the body, testosterone, what it does in the body. And Hormone harmony is how all those hormones balance together. So we give that book away for free. If you go to glownaturalwellness.com and you look around and then you go to leave, I believe there'll be a pop-up offering you the book for free. But if you just want to email support at glownaturalwellness.com, we are more than happy to send you a free digital copy of the book and you can read all about those hormones. But what changes happen during menopause? I can kind of cover that right now. So basically... We have, we have our regular, we have puberty, right? So first we're little girls and then we have puberty. So our breasts start developing. We start menstruating. We start having estrogen and progesterone ebbing and flowing throughout the month. And we are able to get pregnant and have babies. And then we move along, go through our life. 
we may have some irregularities in our period based on stress levels or nutrition. And then we hit age about 30 and we, our hormones start slightly declining. And, and then when we hit late thirties for some women, early forties for other, this time of perimenopause, this is around menopause or before menopause. And this is when our hormones start declining a little more rapidly. Typically first progesterone will decline and progesterone is kind of our calming hormone. It helps with digestion, helps with sleep, helps us with our mood. And so progesterone is usually the first one to decline. And so we start having trouble sleeping. We might start getting headaches. We might start having food sensitivities, things like that. Fatigue, sometimes weight gain, because now we're a little bit estrogen dominant. And then estrogen starts to decline too, as we stop ovulating. So now we're not making eggs anymore because we've reached the end of our reproductive years. And so now we're not making estrogen or progesterone anymore. Our testosterone still generally stays stable, but now the problem is we are androgen dominant. So now we have very low estrogen and progesterone. We've got more testosterone. So now we have more of a male hormone profile. And if you look at the way men gain weight, they gain weight around the midsection where women tend to gain weight around their hips and thighs until they hit menopause. Then they get the belly. They start to lose hair. The hair starts thinning, like male pattern baldness. They might get some facial hair. They might get irritable. And so this is usually that testosterone dominance, but then that starts to fall as well. I kind of call it like second menopause. So when your adrenals start to fail, you start getting more stressed. You have more inflammation from the decreased estrogen. You start having not good digestion. You have more aches and pains, osteoporosis. You're not sleeping, no sex drive. You're all dried up. Your testosterone starts dropping as well. And now all your hormones are low. And this is the case for a lot of women in their sixties, early seventies, all their hormones are low. And so that's generally what kind of happens during menopause in a nutshell. I can probably go much deeper. I do talk about it in the book and then I have a webinar. They can watch us at fixhormones.com. It's kind of, I call it the hormone restoration masterclass or what every woman needs to know about her hormones that her doctor isn't telling her. And so it's at fixhormones.com for now. And you can just watch, so you can sign up. We have different times available. We'll also send you a replay, but you'll actually learn a whole lot about what happens to your hormones, exactly what symptoms are associated with those hormone declines. And then also what you can do to uh, alleviate the issues. And a lot of times I'll talk about hormone replacement because that's really like treating the root cause hormones are low, replacing them, but we are all about holistic health here. So we never just give someone hormones. We're looking at nutrition. We're looking at, you know, getting enough protein, getting your minerals, including some phytoestrogens and some fiber in your diet so that you've got all the benefits. And then we're looking at fitness. So yes, your metabolism will slow. Um, when you have low estrogen, your muscles can't contract as much. When you have low testosterone, you can't build muscle as much. And so those two things combined, we kind of lose our muscle, which lowers our metabolism, which makes us gain weight more. Also when estrogen declines, we're more hungry a lot of times. So we might eat more. We're also not sleeping as well. So that lowers our metabolism and makes us more hungry. And so we put in our healthy hormone Academy follow along workouts. You're following along, working out right with me, doing weight training, doing HIIT workout, high intensity interval training or sprint workouts, which is for everyone's level and then some play metrics and then some slow steady state like walking. So we do all that follow along. We also have pelvic floor therapy. So at home pelvic floor exercises to keep your lady parts strong and supple and toned, not just our muscles, and our arms, but our muscles in our pelvic floor have to be strong if we're going to feel good and not have incontinence and really live a long life. We also have breath work, which breath work alone can reduce hot flashes about 40%. So we have breath work, we have self-hypnosis, so many things. We're still adding more and more to Healthy Hormone Academy. I have a whole detox masterclass coming up in there very shortly. So it's not just about taking hormones and it's not just about eating right. It's really about doing all of it. Because so if we had a thyroid dysfunction, if we had hypothyroidism, we would have to take thyroid hormone to live. If we have diabetes, we need to take insulin. If we have a vitamin D deficiency, we take vitamin D, but if we are hypoestrogenic or we have low estrogen, 
we're like, oh, we don't want to take that, <laughs> but it doesn't make any sense because that's what we need in order to thrive. Can you live without estrogen? Yeah, you can live, but it's not really living when you're like hating your life, when you're dragging through, when you're in pain, when you're struggling. And I don't think you really need to do that. I feel like that's not, not necessary. Oh, the period changes during perimenopause and menopause. Well, those are fun because they're very unpredictable. So one of the first signs of perimenopause is going to be your periods. You skip a period. You get two periods close together. You go three months without a period. Now you're having a period every week. And this is very common as the hormones start changing. We have a follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. These are hormones that tell our ovaries to release eggs. And when you hit perimenopause, like sometimes you just, you didn't release the eggs and now your brain's sending out a whole bunch of follicle stimulating hormones. So the ovary's saying, Hey, release the egg. Hey, release the egg. So it releases an egg, but your brain hasn't realized that yet. So it's still sending the follicle stimulating hormones and then it releases another one. And then you have those two periods. And so generally you'll skip some and then you'll have periods closer together and then they'll kind of spread out and then you'll go three months and you're like, is this menopause? And then boom, you get your period again. And so it's 12 months, a consistent 12 months without a period is considered menopause, but I've had plenty of women go 11 months without a period and boom, they get their period. And so now they're starting over. So now it's one month. So that's kind of what's happening is you're slowing down your egg release. You're getting to the end of your reproductive cycle, but it can be frustrating. And then also because progesterone declines first, you might notice your period getting heavier because you don't have that progesterone to oppose the estrogen. So estrogen is going to build up the lining progesterone is going to thin it back out. And so this is a case where some women may really need to take that progesterone replacement first before they get into estrogen replacement. We have so many women in perimenopause who are joining the healthy hormone club because they want to get ahead of it. They don't want to lose all the collagen in the first three years of menopause where their skin starts to look like super old. They don't want to have the bone loss. They don't want to have the joint pain, but they do notice that they're not sleeping as well. Their periods are starting to get a little bit heavier. And so we supplement with that progesterone first. Sometimes they might need a little DHEA depending on stress levels and adrenals and a lot of other factors in their life. They might need some testosterone or some progesterone, but we can start with the progesterone so you don't have to go through the discomfort and the heavy periods, but you're still going to have the irregular periods. There's nothing we can do about that. That's all part of the cycle of life, the reproductive downturn. Let's see. I'm new to the group. I want to know once I get my hormones balanced, will this affect the dose of my thyroid medicine? It possibly could because balanced estrogen and progesterone support the thyroid. So we do see that some women have to be on a higher dose of thyroid hormone when their estrogen and progesterone are depleted. But once they bring those healthy ranges, they may be able to bring their thyroid hormone down a little bit. And then of course, if you're going to a doctor that's not testing your levels and giving you supra physiological doses, so well above with the dose that you should have, then that can actually make you need more thyroid hormone because it can suppress your hormones. So hormones have to be balanced in order for thyroid to function optimally. And so it can, you may need to reduce your dose down the line once your hormones are balanced, but generally, and when you're taking the right amount of hormones, it, you won't need to increase your dose for that reason, unless there's other things going on in your life, high stress, gut issues that can affect your thyroid as well. Let's see, what bioidentical hormones would you recommend use for shutdown adrenals due to prolonged therapy for lupus, Addison's disease, already using oral DHEA, bioidentical progesterone, herbal support for adrenals? How do you do patches, tinctures? So that's a case where I have to refer you to your treating physician. Addison's disease is something that is not easily reversed with over-the-counter tools. And so I don't know your whole background and situation. So I wouldn't be able to recommend a specific hormone protocol for you. And it may not be like estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone that is going to solve your issue with your adrenals. And so definitely holistic lifestyle is going to be so important in your nutrition, your sleep, 
your exercise, your stress reduction, that's going to be huge. Your minerals, I would actually recommend a hair mineral tissue analysis. That's going to be huge for your thyroid, looking for any nutrient deficiencies. That's going to be huge. And, you know, balancing your hormones. So testing your hormone levels to see, do you need testosterone or DHEA? Do you need progesterone? Do you need estrogen? Because that's going to help support your adrenals, looking at your thyroid, seeing how your thyroid's doing, because your endocrine system, that's your thyroid, your adrenals, your ovaries, your pancreas, all these things are going to be important and also supporting your liver because your liver is kind of like the adjunct friend to your endocrine system. Even though it's not actually part of your endocrine system, it does, it is a huge player in your body's ability to convert hormones. And then also looking for your environment. So looking at things like mold exposure, heavy metal exposure, all these things are very important. Avoiding toxins at all costs, using organic cleaning products, personal care products, foods, avoiding plastics, all of those things. EMFs are also a big one, especially for people with Addison's disease. So you want to look at how to mitigate EMF exposure, shutting your internet down at night, not using Wi-Fi, not putting your phone up to your head. All these things are going to be important as well. So it's a little bit off topic, but I hope that was helpful. Okay. Let's see if you're using a vaginal estriol, one milligram and DHEA, one milligram, do you need to use other hormone treatments? So if you're using vaginal hormones, those are specific to the vaginal area. And estriol is kind of like the weaker estrogen. So it's not estradiol. Estradiol is the hormone that is the part of the estrogen hormone that is more potent. So that's what's going to help your bone health, your brain health, your heart health your insulin resistance, all the things we talk about estrogen, it's mostly estradiol and then estriol is like a helper. So, but estriol does help with vaginal dryness. And so that can be very effective. Oh, come in. Looks like the prize patrol is here. Hey. Oh, what do you got? You got a riddle? Yes. All right. Paxton has a riddle and let me tell you what the prizes are real quick. So if you're new here, this is something I like to do. We like to give stuff away for free. Um, we're going to give out, speaking of vaginal hormones, this is low below vaginal hydration and rejuvenation. This one has a DHEA and then I also have one with estrogen. So if you win the glow below, you can tell me which one you want. It's estriol and estradiol together in bias form, low dose. So it's not systemic. And then we're also going to give away a hormone trio test. So you can actually find out where your hormone levels are and we'll give you a full analysis and let you know if you need to replace hormones or just do something else. We look at symptoms of adrenal, thyroid, all types of stuff as well. So we're going to evaluate 77 symptoms and your actual hormone levels. So we have riddle and how you play is you pop the answer in the chat. And then what's that? I was saying that was, you just closed the chat. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> He's right. All right. So you pop your, put your answer in the chat after Paxton tells you what the question is, and then he will pick two winners. And if you're watching the replay, we'll do two more. So still play along if you're watching the replay. All right, Pax, it's you, all you. Okay. Take off my skin. I won't try, but you will. What am I? Okay. So let me see. Take off my skin. I won't cry, but you will. What am I? I know it. I know it. Okay. If you know the answer, pop it in the chat. Yes. Oh my God. Everyone's super smart. <laughs> that will work too that, yeah, that will work too. too oh my goodness you guys are good at this so there is a little bit of a delay so wait just a minute like 30 seconds Paxton how do you think of that we did it <laughs> oh did you like it? you googled yeah. it google helped yeah awesome I think that was awesome it's a good riddle all right so you want to pick who's going to win the glow below yep here we go ahead you can play with that and you can that was us. incredibly easy but <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Here, start right there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is that okay? Nanette. Uh oh, I can't say your last name. Fazazuski. <laughs> you did smiley face, smiley face, and then onion. So you have won a free bottle of Glow Below. What you're going to do is you're going to email support at Glow Natural Wellness. That's S U P P O R T at Glow Natural Wellness.com. And you're just going to say, I won Paxson's prize. And let us know whether you want Glow Below with 
estrogen or glow below with DHEA. And if you're not sure, you can go to glownaturalwellness.com slash glow below and you can learn about it and you can pick which one you want or we can help you decide. All right, now we're going to give away the hormone trio test. I like the excitement. Okay, you like the excitement with the explanation point? Okay, Lucy, Mark. you were- What? Mark. You said- Oh, exclamation point, exclamation mark. <laughs> All right, Lucy, you did onion with the exclamation point. Is it mark or point? I say exclamation point. I say exclamation mark. Oh, okay. Well, all right. You wrote that. So you're going to win the hormone trio test. So you're going to be able to test your hormones for free. I don't and, remember what, which one I say. Oh, that's okay. And you're just going to also email support at Glenatural Wellness, say that you won Paxson's Prize of Hormone Trio Test, and we'll get the kit sent out to you. So we are going to need both of your addresses so we can mail everything to you. So awesome. Are you, is that the sad face? Oh, is that the onion crying? Oh, yes. <laughs> no, no, that's the sad face from the address part. Oh, really? You're sad about the address? Yeah, because we're going to see the address. <laughs> address. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Pies Patrol Paxton. Uh, 10 new messages. Oh, yay. She said thank you. Awesome. Oh, you're moving everything. All right, Pax, I'm going to let you go. So One finish, new message. So I can finish answering the questions. Okay. Oh, love your shirt. Yeah, we got this for Chris or your birthday. Yeah. It was my birthday, right? <laughs> yeah, it was your birthday. She was my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at that. You're adorable. Okay, right, Pax, I'm going to make you leave now. So I keep finish answering these ladies' questions, okay? Uh, you come back next time, okay? I will never come back. No, yes, you will. <laughs> All right. Pax and Lowe's giving away gifts. So if you watch the replay, you... Lucy. <laughs> yes, Lucy is one of our winners. All right. So if you watch the replay, you can also do the same thing. So just answer the same question. Right. The answer was onion. <laughs> and someone said band-aid which I thought was funny too because that's true I cry when I pull my band-aids off but yes I'm going to kind of look through the chats I think there was a couple questions in here how much vaginal testosterone do you recommend to start to improve libido and reverse so I actually don't recommend vaginal testosterone for that I actually recommend vaginal estrogen for improving libido and reversing clitoral atrophy so the atrophy is due to the loss of estrogen you can use some vaginal DHEA to help to enhance the sensation of sex. So that is super helpful as well. They both work, but the DHEA kind of is like a right before thing. And that can help with increasing sensitivity, but the estrogen is a little stronger for reversing the atrophy. I like lichen sclerosis. Will estrogen therapy help at all? Sorry, this is says that my name is that's okay. We, it's all right if it's the wrong name. I was trying to change my name. Yep, I know. It's sometimes if you're using a joint account, it's hard to change the name on Zoom, but that's okay. I will say that anecdotally, yes, we have many women with lichen sclerosis who have used Glow Below, which is not only estrogen. So in the Glow Below, we have hyaluronic acid, we have aloe, we have a lot of ingredients to help to soothe and restore and rehydrate. It's also pH balance so that it helps with restoring the microbiota of the vaginal tissues, which helps to reverse yeast infections, but also helps to keep the area more less likely to have abrasions and damage. And so it's just a healthier skin barrier. And so I do think it would be super helpful. Let's see. What do you suggest for interstitial cystitis during menopause? I'm already taking DHRT and vaginal estrogen. I'm still getting urinary tract infections. I would say looking into healing your microbiome can be super helpful. A lot of times the gut bladder connection can be super helpful. And then also sometimes pelvic floor therapy can help as well. So those can be options for you. All right, I started I'm starting to answer the question about the vaginal estriol and the DHEA. What is the max level of estriol and vaginal clean that one should use? So you don't really need, you only need like 0.1 to 0.3% um, of estrogen total vaginally. More won't help you more. And with estriol, it's not really going to help you to use more. I would definitely work with a practitioner that is knowledgeable 
about these treatments and not just try to just DIY it. I'd be really careful of what you're putting vaginally as well, just because a lot of these over-the-counter treatments are not pH balanced and cause yeast infections and other things. And so you just want to be careful that you're using something that is high quality, has real hormones in it, has no ingredients that are going to mess with your microbiome. It looks like since you also have bone loss, sleep issues, lots of wrinkles, you definitely want to look into systemic estradiol systemic progesterone and systemic DHEA, which is going to be either topical or a patch. Those are my favorite versions. Topical is my number one choice because there's zero side effects and you can adjust dosing pretty easily. So if someone needs a little more or a little less, it's easy for us to say, okay, you just add an extra pump or take a pump away or skip a day. But if you have a patch, a lot of times the we see a lot of sensitivity to the adhesive in the patches. And then sometimes the pharmacy will change the adhesive and then they won't be able to absorb the hormones as well. And so I just see a lot, some issues there, but generally patches are pretty safe. And then with oral hormones, there's just more chance of clotting and things like that. And you have to take a higher dose because you lose a lot through your digestive tract. So I'm 34, I have premature ovarian failure. Will using estrogen, will estrogen patches decrease my FSH? So if you have true ovarian failure, no, it won't really decrease your FSH, but I'm not really sure why you're wanting to decrease your FSH or if there's some other outcome that you're looking for. And so I'm 74, I've ordered Glopian, but have not started. We all love glow PM because it's so real. It's calming, relaxing. It helps you deal with stress better. It helps you curb cravings. It really enhances your sleep. And then melatonin, just in general, it's one of the number one antioxidants in your body. So I think that would be great for you. I have to scroll back to see what else we were talking about, Ruby, earlier. Yeah, I think that it would be good for you as well, for sure. How much vaginal testosterone? Do, oh, I already answered that. Okay, I think I got most of your questions. Let's see, you mentioned endometrial ablation. I had ablation in 2015. Can that be why I have vaginal atrophy? It could be, it can contribute to it. It can make it worse because you've had a procedure done down there, but most, the majority of women do get vaginal atrophy and dryness, and there's a whole syndrome called genitourinary syndrome of menopause. And that is all the collection of symptoms from the genital urinary tract. So decreased size of the clitoris, saggy skin, atrophy, dryness, urinary tract infections, pain, itching, burning, thinning of the skin, painful sex, these are all in that syndrome. And some people say vaginal atrophy. Some people say vaginal dryness. Some people say GSM. Some people call it different things. It's all falls into the same category. And when we're talking about vaginal dryness and vaginal atrophy, we're really talking about vulva as well. So the vulva is everything you see. If you look at someone's vagina or you hit your own vagina, the vagina is actually the canal. So and when we're talking about vaginal atrophy, we're really talking about vaginal vulvar atrophy. So hopefully that's helpful. But yes, it definitely could be a, a contributor, but it can also just be menopause, which is why you're having that loss of estrogen as the main reason. Can you start transdermal estradiol at 70 to help maintain bone density? Do you ever use DRT testing? Yes, we use DRT testing. I love DRT for saliva testing, dry blood spot testing. So we definitely use the RT. It's one of my favorite labs. We also use a Dutch test if we're looking for hormone pathways, but not necessarily hormone replacement with the Dutch test because it's not the actual hormone levels. It's the metabolite levels, which is a little bit different, but I love both those tests. Also blood tests are great too. But yes, there is no upper age limit for hormone replacement therapy, contrary to popular belief. There used to be a saying that you can only use hormones for 10 years, or you had to just use them the first 10 years after menopause. With that said, if you can use hormones, start using hormones in perimenopause, that's going to be better than if you wait until after menopause. And then if you start taking hormones right after menopause, that's better than if you wait 10, 20 years, because there's a lot of benefits that you're not going to get if you wait until 
a lot of things have already kind of gone downhill, but you definitely can start taking hormones to help rebuild your bone. If you're still alive, hormones can still help you. It's just, like I said, it's almost like when should you start saving for retirement? Well, if you start saving when you're 20, you're going to be better off when you hit retirement. But if you wait until you're 55 to start saving, it's still a good idea. You still want to start saving, but you're not going to have as much benefit as a person that started saving at 20 because you only have five years of savings before you hit retirement age. So hopefully that's helpful. Actually, retirement age is 65, right? Or 67 now. So maybe you have a few more years, but you know what I mean? You get the point, right? The earlier you can start, the better because you're going to get ahead of any of those symptoms, but it's never too late. It's never too late to start living. We have, I just had a 72 year old woman yesterday write in and said, she's finally having sex with her husband for the first time in 10 years. She's actually had an orgasm. And so, Hey, whatever floats your boat, like we, we need to start living. I, I mean, st- most of the women I see who are 70 years old today, I would have not thought they were 70. Like when I was 20 years old and I used to think of someone who's 70, I think of like a wheelchair with a cane, but these women are playing pickleball. They're out there shopping. They're having fun. They're doing things and they look great. And so 70 is not old, not at all. And so you have 30, 40 years to enjoy your life after this. And so the question is, do you want to feel old? Do you want to compromise what you can do? Or do you want to live your best life? Do you want to thrive? Do you want to do everything in your power to actually feel as good as possible in those years and have those relationships and have those experiences? And that's what I want. You saw Paxton, he's eight years old. I'm 48. And so we're talking, you know, Hey, like we're talking when I am, when he's 18, I'm going to be 58. When he's 28, I'm going to be 68. And so I need to be around for a hell of a long time. So I want to see him have babies. I want to be a cool grandma. And so I am doing everything in my power now to ensure that I can live for a very long time. And that's what I want you guys to do as well. I want you guys to live your best life and not not just sit by the sidelines. That's not what we're here for, right? Awesome. Thank you for addressing adrenal question, progesterone cream superior than suppository. I wouldn't say it's superior. So is progesterone cream superior to suppositories, patches, tinctures, and pills? I can't say it's superior, but it is safer than oral roots. It has less side effects than any other method. However, the method that works for you, the method you're going to stick with is the best method. DHEA you can do orally or transdermally. Transdermally, DHEA tends to convert more to testosterone. Orally, it tends to stay more DHEA, but they're both fine. Just be careful with dosing because we just need a little bit. You always want to test to make sure you're not overdoing it because that can backfire on you. Awesome. All right. I think I answered most of your questions. If you have more questions, Oh, wait, no, I did miss one. What styling product do you use in your hair? All right, so I do not use any styling product. So I let my hair dry, not, this is my normal curl. I let my hair dry naturally. I tend to wash my hair like in the morning or whenever I, after I work out. And then I put it in a ponytail all day. I have it in a little ponytail and I put it before I get out of the shower. I just spray a leave-in conditioner and I can't remember the brand because I switch brands quite often, but it's like a natural leave-in conditioner. I spray it in, comb my hair with a wet brush, and then I put it up. And then just before this call, I sprayed some more leave-in conditioner so it didn't look frizzy. And that's it. I am not a hairstyle girl. Like, <laughs> I'm lucky I have curly hair because that's my style. But yeah, that's funny. But definitely it's getting, I had it dyed like a year ago, a highlights and they burned my hair. So it's finally getting soft and shiny again. Um, I don't use a lot of styling products though. I just spray leave-in conditioner and that's it. I do other tricks I do. So I work out a lot. It's my little workout room. I'll give you guys a tour, not today, but I'll do a little video. So I have a Peloton over there. I have a weight rack and a treadmill over here. So it's like half office, half workout room. But so I work out, I like to wash my hair, but I don't use shampoo every day. I can just condition it. And then twice a week I'll do shampoo. So I think that helps it not to dry out as much. Okay. I think that I answered most of the questions. And if I didn't, if you have a question, just shoot me a message. If you're watching the replay, pop it under the video 
if you're on the live, just email support at Bow Natural Wellness, say a Q&A question, and I will make additional videos just to answer your questions. And you guys, I am always looking for topics that you want me to cover for on the front of the Q&As or separate YouTube videos. So let me know if you guys are interested in seeing what I cook, seeing what I eat, seeing workouts or lifestyle stuff, or you just want to stick to menopause topics, or if you want to know skincare, stuff like that. I really want to start creating more content, but I want to create stuff that you want to see, not just stuff I think is fun to do. So anyway, it was so fun hanging out with you. Happy Friday. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Oh my goodness, you guys. And my best Mother's Day gift, like I said in the beginning, was Jeff sent out an email to all the women in the Healthy Hormone Club and asked for them to share their stories. And that has been absolutely amazing. But if you are a user of any of our products, Glow Below, Daily Glow PM, if you've done any of our testing or anything, and you want to give me like, like my big gift is just let me know how it's helped you. Cause that really makes my day. It helps me to show up and really feel like I'm doing good in the world. And also if you've worked with any of my staff and you've had a good experience, you know, let me know that as well. So anyway, let me know what you need. I am here for you. I love doing these Q and A's. I hope it's been helpful. And so it's super fun. And if you're watching the replay, be sure to try to win a prize from Paxton. Awesome. Take care, you guys. Happy Mother's Day. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.